Hello YouTube, Wes here checking in with a brand new Vinyl Finds video for you. I want to apologize for the lack of videos recently. I just haven't been in the mood, been busy with other things in life. Uh, life just gets in the way sometimes and I don't want to make a video when I'm really not in the mood to do it. So I apologize. I know there's been a lot of content out, out in the world recently from the vinyl community as well as lots of others. So there's plenty out there to watch and I hope you've been enjoying it. Um, so let's go ahead and get into this. Even though I haven't produced much content in the past month, I have produced uh, quite a bit of new vinyl into my uh, ever-growing collection. And yeah, January was a pretty big month for me. It started off on the second day of January with a dig uh, with Logan from the, it used to be the Swellheads Network, now he is Murmur Than Hell um, on YouTube and Instagram, I believe. Um, but yeah, did a, did a nice meet up with him uh, right after the new year. Uh, he was down visiting family down in the St. Peter, Petersburg area. And so we drove down there on a Sunday and uh, did some digging. Hit up two stores while we were down there. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a fun time. It was really cool meeting Logan. It's always fun to meet people, other, vi other vinyl video creators. Um, and it's cool to just hang out and dig some and chat a little, even though I wasn't in a real chatty mood on that day for whatever reason. But uh, it, it was really it was really cool to meet Logan. We, and it was really cool to hang out. Uh, so yeah, we started out the day, started out the year uh, at both both mine and Logan's, probably both of our favorite record stores in the area, in that area anyway, in that part of Florida, uh, Planet Retro Records in St. Petersburg, Florida. Always a really killer store. They do a really good job of going out and hunting out uh, collections to buy, and they buy really interesting collections. They bring in a lot of uh, new used vinyl, which I like. Uh, you know, so I, I am a fan of modern artists, modern music, and it's really cool to be able to pick some of that stuff up used. Um, so yeah, we started out at Planet Retro. Uh, first thing I wanted to share was something Logan gave me as VCLT from Planet Retro. Uh, while, we were, while we were there digging, I was in one row, he was in another, and he was like, hey, have you heard this Joe Jackson album? And it's uh, Blaze of Glory by Joe Jackson from 1989 so pretty late Joe Jackson album for the vinyl area for the vinyl era anyway and yeah I said you know I have I haven't heard this one yet uh, kind of I asked him to describe it to me because Joe Jackson is one of those artists that's always changing his sound always progressing his sound is the best way I can explain it you know the albums change over time but it's never a drastic change it's always slightly changing in different directions. Uh, so this comes right after the Big World album. So he, it's kind of follows that up. It's moving more, it's more into a pop 80s kind of realm. But along those same lines, you know, there's a bit of familiarity to it. It's a bit of, it's a Joe Jackson album. If you like Joe Jackson, you're probably gonna like this. And Logan, Logan really highly recommended this and he, uh, bought it for me as VCLT and that was awesome and I yeah I, I did really uh, enjoy this I actually spun this uh, Sunday evening when we got home I was winding down from the drive back from St. Petersburg and put this on and it was a nice thing to chill out to um, yeah so that was the first thing from Planet Retro Records some VCLT from Logan so thank you again Logan I did really enjoy this and this is definitely going to be a uh, it's definitely going to make a spot in my Joe Jackson collection. All right, and then my personal pickups from Planet Retro. Uh, speaking of new used vinyl, uh, this is one I picked up while I was there. Uh, the latest, I believe this is the latest album by The National. Uh, Sad Songs for Dirty Lovers, I believe released digitally in 2020 and uh, the vinyl release didn't happen until 2021. So this is pretty new, uh, but it was in the used bin. It was, you know, it was a used vinyl kind of price uh, on one of the national albums I hadn't picked up before, but I wanted to get it and it was really cool to uh, find it there and save a few bucks buying it used, but still in nice new minty condition. So picked up the new one from the national and this is just on black vinyl. I don't know if there were any colored pressings on this or not. Um, on the great 4AD label, so that was uh, 
one of my pickups from there. All right, and then all the rest I think came from the uh, the discount room. They have a they have a room of records. They're like two, three. Well, one of these didn't come from there, uh, but yeah, all the records in the back room are like one, two, or three dollars. You know, they're all bargain bargain bin kind of stuff. Uh, but always some interesting things in there, and I I really only scratch the surface as normal you know if you spend too much time in that room you're going to walk out with a huge pile of vinyl because there's always interesting things uh, so the first thing i grabbed here was a trevor rabin solo album titled can't look away uh yeah don't know anything about this album other than i you know, i do like trevor rabin and i think i'll probably like this i've never heard it before but i uh, definitely wanted to uh, pick it up and give it a shot that was the first one I picked up from the discount room back there. Um, and I think this one came out of the actual regular part of the store at the used, you know, where the used records are. Uh, Mr. Mr. Go On. Uh, when was this from? Late 80s, sometime 87, 88, I think. Yeah, from 1987. This is the follow-up to their really big album, which is it Welcome to the Real World or something? What What's the name of that album? Um, I'm, I'm totally blanking on things right now, but their big, big, their big hit album. Uh, and yeah, this was pretty good. It was, you know, there weren't any real big hits on here, but they continued on with their they're kind of the sound of Mr. Mister. They didn't go too far into that sort of jazz pop kind of thing that a lot of the, a lot of the earlier '80s kind of synthy kind of groups did. Uh, they stuck with that sort of synthy pop radio kind of sound, and uh, yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy, but really an enjoyable album from them. Um, trying to think. I think this was one of those albums where the side B just got better and better and better as it went on and it kind of ended on a high note. So I really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, that was uh, Mr. Mr. with Go On. I think maybe this was their last album for a while. Not sure. Um, and then, okay, we're back into the discount bargain room, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we got Robin Trower with Twice, Twice Removed from Yesterday. Um, of course, you know, I got Bridge of Size. Um, really enjoy that one. And this is these, this one and the next one kind of have similar covers. So I wanted to hear them and check them out and see what they're all about. Um, so be able to pick these up at a bargain price was nice. So I picked that one up. This one's from 1973 is the year on this one. Uh, and then the next one I picked up is For Earth Below. And this one is from 1975. So, yeah, I'm just looking to spin these and check them out. I always want to just at least hear them once just to know what they're about. As you know, I've heard, heard, as I said, heard Bridge of Size, enjoyed it. So I want to check these out as well. Okay, so that was it for Planet Retro. And then after we were done there, uh, Logan and his dad had to go back home for a while to take care of some things. Uh, we went over to a Goodwill nearby, didn't find anything. So after Logan and his dad were done doing what they had to do, we met back up at a record store that was new to me. I've never been there before called Daddy Cool Records. Uh, yeah, really cool place. Definitely, if if I lived in the area, it would be the record store I would go to on Fridays to, to, you know, to check out the new releases, to pick up whatever new releases I wanted to get. It was that kind of store where you'd, you know, they they have a lot of new releases and they do have a nice used section as well. But uh, yeah, got a cool vibe. Enjoyed enjoyed digging there. It's definitely a place I will go back to. As I said, it's a place I would I would definitely go if I lived down in that area. If I wanted to go pick up the new releases on Friday, I believe that would be a good place to go. Uh, but a cool store, and uh, thanks Logan for letting me know about it because I really didn't know about this store. Um, so I got a sort of a mixture of new and used things there. Uh, first thing I got here is from the used bin, but it is a fairly new record. Uh, this is from 2016, uh, Damien Gerardo with Visions of Us on the Land. Uh, yeah, really, I was just intrigued by the album cover. I've heard the name Damien Gerardo before, but wasn't real familiar with the music. 
So I thought, what the heck, we're just gonna go ahead and roll the dice on this. The price was really good on this, and I I really did enjoy it. It's uh, kind of like a psych folk kind of thing. Really, really, that kind of really pleasant psych folk, uh, you know, almost kind of like a, um, like a Beach Boys-esque kind of psych folk. Um, uh, so this is a two LP set that he did in 2016. Uh, it's the third in a trilogy of records that sort of tells a story. I'm, st I'm still learning about it and I haven't really gone back and listened to the first two, but yeah, just a really enjoyable sort of dreamy folk kind of album folk psych kind of album and uh, yeah I don't I like that one quite a bit uh, the gatefold just has lyrics and this is just a this is a uh, this is a black vinyl pressing two LPs all right the next thing I picked up there at daddy cool was a sealed record from 1989 and it's a hip-hop record we have Kumo D with knowledge is king classic album of his with a uh, I'm hitting hard on here and the title track knowledge is king yeah love this album growing up and uh, it was cool to find it still sealed in the wild it was uh, really really fun to find this so I was glad to uh, pick this one up and crack it open it's been been sealed up for well over 30 years and uh, yeah, it was a that was a fun find and Glad to uh, check this out. Being from 89, a pretty pretty basic release on Jive Records. Okay, the next thing was a newer release that was a blind another blind buy for me. I was just intrigued by the cover, flipping through the new records there. As, as I said, they had a lot of new records. It was a really cool store for, for you know new vinyl saw this and the cover intrigued me and I thought what the heck we're just gonna grab it and see what it's all about this one is from Omar Apollo with Ap Apollonia or Apollonio uh, so Omar Apollo is a Mexican American artist uh, very much a Prince kind of vibe here but does it in a modern pop kind of style so really really interesting artist uh I, I i dug this album quite a bit definitely kind of has a, a bit of a punky vibe at a times a bit of a as i said a very heavy prince influence at times uh, yeah really cool that's the cover there's the gatefold on this one uh, this one had a poster as well This is on a black vinyl. All right, and then the next thing I picked up there at uh, Daddy Cool Records was another blind buy. This one came out of the used bin, but it is a newer release again. Uh, yeah, I definitely, I definitely like that about that store is they had a lot of newer releases in the used section, so you could go in there and find some, find some interesting things. And I was walking around, and Logan noticed this was in my hand, and he's like. Oh yeah, you're, you, you know, he mentioned it, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just intrigued by it. I want to check it out, and he's like, yeah, you're you're gonna dig that, I think. So, and he was right. I definitely do dig this. Um, and this is an album by the group Kindness, or I'm not sure if it's in, just an, a solo artist or they go they go by Kindness. Uh, but the album title is something like a war. Uh, 2019 is the release year on this one on Female Energy Limited. Um, what can I say about this? It's kind of a, it's kind of a soul electronica kind of blend. Uh, it has this dancey sort of electronica vibe, but it also has this very soulful R and B kind of vibe to it. Um, very, very groovy. If you like really groovy kind of things, this definitely will, will hit you, hit you good with that kind of stuff. But yeah, I definitely dug this, dug listening to this. There's the cool gatefold on this one. And another nice thing is this is on 
pressed on color vinyl is pressed uh, it's two LPs on pink vinyl so that's that's nice that was a nice feature and yeah it was nice to be able to <laughs> again pick it up used and save a few bucks and check out something new okay and the last thing I picked up there at daddy cool records actually came from the Christmas music section and yeah I wish I wish I'd gotten there a couple weeks sooner uh, they had a really awesome Christmas section both new and used vinyl and on the 2nd of January I just wasn't in the mood to buy Christmas music but I did buy one thing it was only a dollar that's why I picked it up but this is Gary Morris with every Christmas I know nothing about this I have not played it yet I don't know what it sounds like so I can't <laughs> I can't suggest it or say don't get this or whatever, uh, but yeah, it was just a dollar pickup in the Christmas section. I was intrigued, so I went ahead and grabbed it. I like the, I like the way it looks. So, okay, so that was it for my finds from Daddy Cool Records. After we said our goodbyes with Logan, my husband and I went to get some deep dish pizza at Cappy's, a pizza restaurant. I uh, believe they have a couple locations down in the Tampa St. Petersburg area. Never been there before. Saw it on one of the vloggers that I watch, uh, Tampa J. If you're familiar with his channel, uh, he he's a fan of Cappy's Pizza, and yeah, I, I love Chicago style deep dish pizza. And I thought, what better than right after meeting Logan to uh, enjoy some some Chicago style pizza? Um, and yeah, Cappy's was really really good. I, I uh, I take my pizza pretty seriously, and they know what they're doing there at Cappy's, and I was I was really happy with it. So that was a good dinner. So definitely, if you're in the Tampa St. Pete area, check out Cappy's. Um, they do have a regular thin crust pizza as well if you're not a deep dish fan. Uh, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, deep dish is the way to go, and they do they do it right. So take that as a recommendation for me if you're in the Tampa area. Check out Cappy's Pizza, killer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the rest of the things I picked up in January because it wasn't just that one day of digging. Of course, lots and lots of end of year lists come out in that time period. So I'm, I'm finding out things. So, uh, so I'm discovering releases that I missed throughout the year, sort of revisiting things I passed on throughout the year and deciding you know whether or not to pick things up. So kind of my end of year going through things I picked up some some releases that I had either missed or passed on originally uh, the first thing I picked up here that got seemed to get a lot of hype at the end of the year made a lot of end of year lists I was kind of surprised because I didn't really hear much about this one during the year it was just kind of one of those end of year things that everybody was talking about um, that is Amethyst Kia with Wary and Strange uh, this gets listed at the, see, this is the kind of weird thing. This this kind of gets put into the country genre for some reason. It's not really country in my opinion. It has some country tinges to it, but it's more of like a blues rock soul kind of feel. Uh, rock, a little bit of country, but I don't see how this gets put into the country genre. This supposedly made the country charts at one point. Um, you know, just because you're from Nashville or whatever doesn't mean it should be, uh, it doesn't mean it's a country album, but anyway, good, good, really, really good music. Definitely very, she bears her soul here. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, I'm see, yeah, as I said, a lot of people were just talking about this at the end of the year and I sampled it a little bit and, and dug what I was hearing. So I went ahead and grabbed a copy for myself and yeah, this was it's definitely one of the one of the top releases of 2021 so glad to have this and this is on a black vinyl mastered by Chris Bellman so it does sound really good soulful bluesy rock country kind of thing a little bit of folk folk yeah folk folky kind of thing as well all, all in those kind of genres a bit all over the place but but really good really enjoyable music and uh, yeah, definitely definitely worth giving a sample to if you haven't heard it yet all right the next thing I have to share with you is a reissue that I've had on my wish list for a while and decided to just go ahead and grab it this is 
you know, it's been on the wish list for a while. It's probably going to go out of print some point soon. Um, and that is the reissue of REM's Monster. I believe this was the 25th anniversary, released in 2019. Um, a, you know, an REM album I wasn't really familiar with beyond the, the big hit on here, which is What's the Frequency, Kenneth? Um, of course, everyone knows that song. Couldn't have been listening to the radio in the last 25 years and not heard it. Um, but yeah, a, a good solid album from them. A little bit a little bit more raw, a little bit more raucous, a little bit more noisy than what they had done before and what they did afterwards. Uh, the band is known as saying this is their least one of their least favorite albums of theirs. Um, so what makes this interesting, uh, speaking of that, is that this has a, a remix of the whole album on the second LP. So the first LP is the original album, remastered, and then the second LP is sort of an alternate take on the, on the full album. And they, they toned it down, they softened it down, they made it fit more into R.E.M.'s sort of typical kind of wheelhouse and I I really like the remix album and I was you know starting out you know the what's the frequency Kenneth remix I was like okay it sounds a little different but it's not that different but as I listened to the as I listened to the remix album I was like yeah this is so much better I'm hearing a lot more of the instrumentation I'm not I don't feel like I'm being bombarded so much by sound I'm I'm actually enjoying the musicality of it and listening to different parts of the music and you know all the different instruments um, so I, I really did like the remix album I wasn't sure if it was going to be worth having for me but I'm glad I bought this and uh, so yeah really cool to pick this up on vinyl so here is that this is actually the second LP the remix album uh, mastered by uh, Jose Nino Hernandez um, and pressed at RTI, and Jose works at Sterling Sound. So nice, nice mastering and pressing here. And I believe that's the second LP sleeve here. Uh, this does come with uh, a nice essay talking about the album itself, and you know all those, you know, talks about the remix and the album and what the band was doing at the time and what they did before and what they did after, kind of just a nice essay about that. So that was nice to have. Okay, the next thing I have to share with you is another 2021 release that sort of slipped by me, and that is the latest one from the group Low. This is their album titled Hey What. Um, yeah, really, really interesting album by Low this year. This definitely is moving farther up my list of favorite albums of the year. Very much an electronic album from Low. They're, they're, they've been doing more and more electronic things over the past years. Um, and I've been really digging it. And this one is no different. It's very electronic. It's very textural, very abrasive at times, very ethereal and beautiful at times. You know, that's kind of what Low is known for is, is sort of vocal, ethereal, kind of beautiful kind of harmony sounds and vocalizing but yeah this gets electronic and gritty and i i love it i love the the mixture of those those beautiful vocal kind of things mixed with the textural gritty electronic kind of stuff uh, definitely is a good fit for the world we live in now and how you know how crazy it can be and how unsurprised by anything that happens in the world these days we are you know you never know what's going to happen next and you know death and destruction everywhere kind of thing and this kind of fits that well for better or worse um but yeah really really dug this one is glad to finally grab it uh, another gatefold that's not real interesting and this is on black vinyl. Unfortunately, I didn't buy this early enough to get the uh, to get the loser edition. I would have liked to have gotten that, even though I think it's just I think it's just clear vinyl on this one. I'm not sure. Uh, didn't seem that incredibly special. Uh, but yeah, the album itself is very special, and uh, definitely definitely dug the new one. The new one from Low, titled "Hey What 2021." Definitely going to be on my 
top 10 albums of 2021. Next up is an EP actually showed on uh, Logan's contest that he did about parental advisory, I believe was the title of it. And uh, he wanted to see some see some family portrait albums and he mentioned Hanson albums. So I showed a bunch of Hanson albums and I showed this one, which is Hanson Against the World, which uh, came out in 2021, didn't get released on vinyl until uh, early in January of 2022. Uh, so this is their, their latest release and I had not even opened it at the time. So wanted to share it again here in this video because it is a January pickup and the, it is on colored vinyl and is a pretty cool pressing. So I wanted to share it and this does come with a nice sort of poster slash booklet here. There's another picture of the guys. And inside's got some, some photos and thank yous and stuff, which is nice. And then the vinyl itself is this really cool gold foil thing. I don't know exactly how it is they do that when it looks like there's like foil in the middle of the record. Um, but yeah, I really, I really like when they do this um, for vinyl. I've seen it, seen it done with silver and gold before, and it's a really cool effect. Um, but yeah. Definitely was surprised when I opened this up because I thought it was just going to be a plain sort of yellow vinyl, but yeah, I do like that sort of wavy, shimmery kind of metallic effect that they have. So yeah, it was really cool to pick this up. Um, Hanson, so Hanson Against the World. It's Hanson. If you've listened to anything that they have done in the past, say, 10 years, this is not going to be too far out of what what they've been doing you know they're they kind of have a set fan base and they play to their fans and they make just some great enjoyable poppy poppy rock kind of songs um and yeah i i, I dig their music and uh, i was glad to uh, pick this one up on vinyl all right, the next thing I have to share with you is another from the wish list. I think I might have mentioned this in my vinyl tag video from last year or maybe even the year or two before that. I don't remember. I remember mentioning this at some point in a video that this was something that was I wanted to get. <laughs> and it took me till the end of 2020 or it took me till the beginning of 2022 really to pick it up. And that is uh, Chris Tone Kingfish's album. Uh, just titled Kingfish, I believe. Uh, you know, blues guitar, electric blues guitarist, really young young guy, but just incredible talent, incredible skill, incredible. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Just great blues music, great electric blues music. If you if you like electric blues, you probably know this guy. You you probably like him. And uh, yeah, finally finally got around to picking this up on vinyl really glad to have it and this is on alligator records on black vinyl and i believe he just put out put out a new album in the past month or so which i'll have to have to check out but yeah, i've been digging spinning this one and finally <laughs> finally actually got around to to picking it up so kingfish it's in the got in the inbox this month okay the next thing i have to share is another 2021 release that i sort of looped back around to. I've heard a lot about this over the year. Uh, finally just decided we're going to go ahead and grab it. I checked it out a little bit and dug what I was hearing and that is Snail Mail's Valentine album. I believe her second album. Really excellent pop music. Um, definitely, you know, pop music about young, well, not young love, but just love in general. Um, she is sort of wise behind, beyond her years as far as love and relationships and that kind of thing. That's something I've heard mentioned and, and I kind of get that as well from this album. Really, really excellent, excellent pop album. And yeah, another one that would probably wind up on my top 10 list uh, for 2021. Love the, love the photography and the artwork on this one. Nice glossy cover. It's really nice. And this is on black vinyl from Matador Records. I'm sure they probably did a colored version of this. Snail Mail's Valentine. Definitely dig it. Definitely agree with all the 
the kudos and the end of lists that this is making. Um, yeah, excellent, excellent album. So if you're into if you're into you know indie pop kind of stuff, definitely check this one out. If you haven't, it's a good one. All right, this next thing I have to share with you was a I believe it was a Black Friday record store day release from three or four years ago now that was kind of on my wish list and never kind of got around to getting it. Um, looked for it. It was supposed to be at uh, the record store in St. Augustine when I was went down there around July, I guess for July 4th. Uh, I was supposed to have been there and for some reason it wasn't there. Um, so I just kind of put it on my Discogs wish list and uh, been watching watching them pop up on Discogs and finally pulled the trigger on one. Um, so this is titled Love is a Drag for Adult Listeners Only. Uh, so it's titled, it's so, sort of subtitled Sultry Stylings for, from a most, uh, Sultry Stylings by a Most Unusual Vocalist. So what this is, is love songs about men sung by a man. So it's, it's very, you know, it's very loungy kind of vocal pop kind of, you know, 50s kind of sound um, that, you know, typically you would hear a female vocalist singing, uh, but it's sung by a man. Um, the, the singer is straight, but yeah, the, the producer of this album, um, which is Murray Garrett, uh, he went in, he claims he stumbled into a gay bar at some point, which I don't think in this, this time period you just stumbled into a gay bar, but whatever. Um, so he claims that he, you know, went into a gay bar and there was this vocalist doing this exact thing, you know, singing these songs that typically women would sing, you know, pop, love, sort of loungy kind of songs, uh, but it was a guy singing them and a crowd full of gay people. Um, so this, this producer said, that's, that's kind of an interesting thing. I'd like to make something like that. Um, he worked with the, the owner of Liberty Records, I believe it is, uh, yeah, Liberty Records and said, yeah, I want to do this thing, you know, male vocalist singing love songs for men. Um, you know, and the owner of Liberty Records thought it was an interesting idea as well. Said, go ahead, let's do it, let's make this thing. They ended up doing it, uh, you know, they hired a vocalist that was willing to do it, re recorded the songs, uh, put it out on a sub, sub label of, of Liberty Records called Lace Records. And yeah, it was kind of became this underground kind of gay queer music history kind of thing. It's actually been featured on the uh, Queer Music Heritage radio show. Um, and yeah, I just have heard about this before, wanted to get it. And it, was, it was a record store day release from a few years back. Um, wanted to grab this and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting listen. It's a historical piece. Mainly that's why I have it is just for the history of it. Not, not typically my kind of music. Um, so this is pressed on a golden vinyl color. And they, get the, they reproduce the Lace Records label. Uh, so yeah, that's Love is a Drag. Finally picked that one off the, off the wish list and glad to uh, finally have this and be able to listen to it. It's, fun. it's a fun one to put on. Even though it's not necessarily something I would normally, normally listen to. I don't buy a lot of, you know... Jackie Gleason or Doris Day or anything like that, but nice piece of history. Um, and then these last two came from basically the last, uh, the end of the, the end of January from the Goodwill in Ocala. Uh, just two finds from there. Didn't find much in the way of vinyl. Almost missed these actually. I was you know, we were walking out and I noticed uh, this small stack of vinyl in one of the. They're back to doing their stupid. Uh, laundry bins full of media of all types and it's just a mess and stuff gets broken and bent and not good but anyway found these two records here 
I uh, want to share these couple of records I found there at the Goodwill and then I'll let you go. First one here is a live album from Allman Brothers Band, Wipe the Windows, Check the Oil, Dollar Gas. Another 2LP live set from the Allman Brothers Band. Later later live set, you know, they're they're really well known for their uh, their, their live concert recordings. This one's from 1976 is the year on this one. Uh, this one's got Ramblin' Man on it. Uh, it's not my cross to pair. Jessica, really nice live set from them. There's Gatefold. Uh, and then the last thing I found in January, this is a blues rock band, electric blues rock band titled The Backtrack Blues Band with their album Dress It Up from 1983 on True Tone Productions. Uh, so the Backtrack Blues Band are a, as I said, an electric blues band. They are based in St. Pete area, I believe, Clearwater, somewhere down in that area. They are still active to this day, or and, and I mean, they re they released albums as recently as 2020. Um, so still still going. Uh, and yeah, I wanted I just wanted to check this out. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, this sells for. $10 median price on Discogs, so I thought, well, if I don't like it, I can always put it on Discogs, get my money back. Um, so yeah, that was the uh, that was the final pickup for January. Hope you enjoyed seeing what I found. Hope you're all doing great. Hope you're finding some great things, listening to some great music. Uh, you know, I do as I did and check out the uh, Check out some of the end of the end of the year lists and loop back around and check out some of the stuff you missed for 2021. I'm sure there are some things you missed. Um, so I want to thank you for watching. Have a great day, a great night. Remember, there is no bad music, only music you don't like. And we'll see you again next time. Cheers.